Hello and welcome back to the channel guys, today I have another special game I wanted to share with you. This game was played between Edward Mackenzie Jackson who was playing with white and Frank Marshall who was playing with black pieces. This game was played in London in 1899 and as you all know Frank Marshall was a chess legend and a chess genius. He was a US chess champion for many years and he is considered to be one of the greatest chess players to ever play the game. And what is funny about this game is that white actually made a mistake by not going with his king forward which was counter into but sometimes those kind of moves are really good moves he played something else and he got checkmated and got punished really fast because of that so truly a wonderful game i'm sure you will enjoy and we'll go straight into the game edward mckenzie jackson started the game with e4 and frank marshall replied with e5 game continued with bishop c4 the bishop's opening and knight f6 this is the berlin defense of the bishop's opening white continues with d3 and frank marshall plays d5 here which is the sharpest line and our game continues with e takes on d5, knight takes on d5 and queen e2 for white. Right now white is aiming at this black pawn. The game continues with knight c6 defending this pawn. And white now plays f4 which is a very common move in this bishop's opening. Also knight c3 and knight f3 are good moves and are also played in this opening. Black continues with bishop c5, normal developing move putting the bishop on the best square. And white continues with knight f3. And right now Frank Marshall finds the best move in this position which is bishop g4 and pinning this white knight. Game continues with h3 for white. Bishop takes on f3 and queen takes on f3. Frank Marshall decided to give up this bishop for this dangerous knight. So our game continued with knight b6 for black. Right now this bishop is under attack and white plays bishop b5 in order to avoid this. Castle for black and white now decided that it is best for him to double the pawns of the black and he played bishop takes on c6, b takes on c6 and right now our game continued with f5 for white. White doesn't want to open this e file and that is the reason why this pawn wasn't taken. Also I will show you what would happen if white decided to take this free pawn. So instead of pushing f5 after b takes on c6, if white decides to take this pawn then the game continues with bishop d4, c3, e takes on f4, c takes on d4, rook e8 first, intermezzo check, king f1, queen takes on d4 and queen f3. After this move black is slightly better, white didn't want to enter in this sort of position especially playing against Frank Marshall so he decided to play f5. Frank Marshall now plays e4 temporarily sacrificing this pawn but he wants to open his d file and he also wants to open his e file and to put pressure on this pawn after it is taken. White decided to accept this sacrifice, d takes on e4 and rook e8 was played for black. Our game continued with knight c3 developing the undeveloped pieces and knight d5 was played for Frank Marshall. Right now you cannot take this knight because your king is pinned. White now played g3 here with the idea to put his king on f1 and then go on g2 and put his king to safety and to create sort of artificial castle but this is not a good move because you're weakening your position and black immediately strikes with knight b4. Although knight b4 was a decent move Frank Marshall actually missed a win here after g3. I will show you the line so the best move for Frank Marshall was knight takes on c3 and after b takes on c3 we play queen d5 here. Of course you cannot take this queen because your king is pinned and right now this pawn is hanging, this pawn is hanging as well and the situation is really difficult to play as white. For example if you continue with queen d3 which is the recommended move by the computer, black continues with queen takes on f5, again you cannot take this queen and if white continues with bishop f4 we continue with rook a to d8 and white's position is completely collapsing right now the recommended move by the computer is actually rook h2 if you decide to save your queen and you play something like queen f1 we continue with rook takes on e4 check bishop e3 rook takes on e3 check queen e2 rook takes on e2 king takes on e2 and queen f2 is the checkmate so all of this was forced and Frank Marshall missed an easy win here and I wanted to show you this line because this can happen to the best of us and our game continued with knight b4 and right now taking this pawn on c2 is a huge threat that is the reason why queen e2 was played for white. Right now in this position black decided to play queen d4 which is a good move centralizing the queen and putting her on a really good spot in the center of the board. Game continued with 
king f1, white continues with his idea of putting his king on g2, putting his king to safety and then introducing this rook into the game with for example rook d1 which is a really decent move. Our game continued with knight d5, again you cannot take this with a pawn because your queen will fall, you can only take this with a knight and black would like this trade to happen because he will no longer have doubled pawns so our game continued with king g2 and knight takes on c3 for black, b takes on c3 and right now Frank Marshall played queen takes on e4 check, his decision is to enter an endgame which will be more favorable to him, queen takes on e4, rook takes on e4 and king f3 was played for white, right now there are no more queens on the board and there is no immediate checkmate threat so this is a decent move by white, he wants to centralize his king and this is always a good thing to do in an endgame, our game continued with rook a to e8 for Frank Marshall and bishop d2 was played for white with the idea to connect these rooks and to finally get some initiative going for white, in this position Frank Marshall played rook e2 which is a really good move because right now you are taking a control of the second rank always a good thing to have in rook versus rook endgames and also you are preparing this nasty check on f2 from the rook the game continued with rook a to d1 to protect this bishop of course and our game continues with rook f2 for frank marshall king goes on g4 and right now frank marshall plays h5 sacrificing another pawn in order to get this king even closer and even more trapped here on h5 White continues with king takes on h5 and black plays g6 here check, f takes on g6 and rook e5 check was played for black, still there are no checkmates in this position here and white plays king g4, right now position is a dead draw and f5 was played for black check, king h4 was played for white which is again a decent move and after king g7 white makes a huge mistake he plays what seems a completely normal move bishop f4 attacking this rook but this move is a huge blunder and it leads to a forced checkmate i will show you of course how a little bit later and i will firstly show you how the white should have played this position so after king g7 was played white simply should have played king h5 and this is the position i was talking you about in the intro so king h5 was the best move although it seems counterintuitive to put your king even closer to this cage of black this is actually the best move because right now after f4 and king g4 for white f takes on g3 king takes on g3 rook d5 attacking this bishop bishop c1 rook takes on c2 rook takes on d5 c takes on d5 <laughs> rook takes on c3 check king g4 and king takes on g6 and after this sequence although black is a pawn up this position is a draw and white should be able to draw this game with a proper play so this is what should have been played but unfortunately bishop f4 which is a huge blunder was played and after this move black continues with king takes on g6 bishop g5 rook f4 check and after this move white decided to resign because there is no way he can stop a checkmate i will of course show you what would happen firstly i would like to show you why bishop g5 was played instead of taking this black rook so i will now show you after king takes on g6 if white decides to take this rook then we have bishop e2 check and the only remaining move for black is bishop f6 and we checkmate with bishop takes on f6 so that is the reason why bishop g5 was played and after rook f4 let's see what would happen if white decided to take this rook with bishop takes on f4 then the game continues with bishop e7 check and again the only move is bishop g5 and bishop takes on g5 is a checkmate i have two more lines i wanted to share with you in this position so after rook f4 check if white decides to play g4 we have a checkmate with bishop f2 and the last line i wanted to share with you after rook f4 check if white decides to take this rook again checkmate on f2 is inevitable and this is how frank marshall won this game and this is all i have prepared for you today if you enjoyed this video please make sure to leave it a like comment and share it because it helps me a lot with gaining more audience and gaining recognized from the youtube algorithm as always we will see each other in the next video have a wonderful day bye bye